Our guest of the day, Ms. Belinda Lewis, holds a rich profile where she worked in different fields, including banking, civil service, higher government offices, and a lot more. I feel honored to invite Ms. Belinda Lewis on stage to address the gathering. Please, ma'am. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for the very kind invitation to join you um, in such a, a beautiful, beautiful environment. It's so interesting for me being quite new still in Karachi to look at the architecture and see the similarities um, between my own home and yours. It's, it's such a rich mixture of styles. It's a very interesting place for me to be. All I wanted to share with you really um, in this address are three quite simple points. And the, they're all drawn from, I suppose, the lessons that I took away from my university education. I studied at Girton College in Cambridge, um, and it was the most marvellous experience. It was a bit of a love-hate relationship for me. There was nowhere else I would rather have studied, but it was also quite stressful, and I put a lot of pressure on myself, um, and I took it all very, very seriously and didn't have a great work-life balance. On reflection, I'm glad that I worked hard. That was my one opportunity to get the best possible degree, but I, I missed out on things like rowing and I wasn't perhaps as sociable as I might have been. So I think if there's a, an extra fourth lesson that I pass on, it would be try to get the right kind of balance because university education is about your degree, but it's about everything else as well. It's about lifelong friends. It's about trying new things, extending your skills. It's about living life in an interesting way for three, four, five years. So of the three points that I, I wanted to share with you, the first is, um, is that how you think is more important than what you know. And this really came to me at the very start of my university career when I was interviewed to see if, if I would get a place at Cambridge. And I was, I was being asked various questions in this interview. And what, what they did, I don't know if they still do this, so maybe I don't tell anyone that I've told you this, what they did as part of my Cambridge interview was they showed me four photographs of a garage and they were taken at different points in time and some were in black and white, some were in colour and I was asked to talk about them. So I looked at these photographs of a garage and I thought, I mean I, I was interviewed in 1998 so I thought maybe there was some link to the Iraq war or oil shortages or I didn't know what the point was. So I, I talked about them about sort of improvements in technology and maybe improvements in, in sort of imagery and primary source material and what you could read from an image that had no writing. And, and then I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm just, I'm just going to stop. So I'd said to the supervisor who was interviewing me, I, I can keep talking, I can talk for a long time, believe you me, I could talk for a long time about these photographs, but I don't see the point. What, you know, is there something special about them? Why, why are you showing me photographs of a garage for a Cambridge interview? And he just sort of smirked at me and said, it's because we want to know how you think. This isn't about what you know, this is about how you think. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll keep exploring different issues to do with photographs of garages. And I carried on talking until they finally told me to stop. But it also came back to me at the very end when I'd sat my finals. And there were some surprise questions in there where I'd prepared very, very carefully for those exams. But there were a few angles that the examiners took that caught me out. And I just thought, sitting there in that auditorium, and then when I got my results, I just thought, this is genuinely about how I think. They take for granted what you know, and they expect you to know a lot. But then it's what you do with that information. And I think looking now at, at how I draw on my formal education in my current career as a diplomat, that sense of being able to pick up on lots of different arguments, different angles, different factual information, anecdotes, and then how you think about it, how you process it and boil it down into a clear, cogent, convincing argument in order to try and press your point or to achieve a particular outcome. It's such an important skill. And what, what I learned in my three years at Cambridge was very interesting, but it's not really the substance of the material. It's the thought processes. It's how I was taught to think and explore ideas and to nurture that spirit of inquiry within my own mind. So I think how, how you think is far more important than, than what you know and keep playing around with ideas and different constructs and frameworks to process different information. 
My second point sounds a bit accusatory, perhaps, but it's simply this. Don't be lazy. Don't ever allow yourself or your mind to become lazy. Your brain is a muscle and you have to keep working it in order for it to, to stay nimble and for it to grow. And there have been times in my life where I've been so busy or I've been going through a very sociable time and I haven't been reading anything that's really stretched my mind. I haven't really been watching films that have really stimulated my brain. I haven't done any online study. I haven't been part of a book club. I haven't really worked my brain to the extent that I should have done. And then I start feeling a bit stale and I feel that I've fallen back and I want something to refresh my mind. So I look for something else to get involved in. So even now, although I'm incredibly busy and I don't really have any kind of work-life balance, I make sure that I read a good mixture um, of fact and fiction material. I try to read scientific publications, economic publications, and I try to read novels that really stretch my brain in a different way that uses either different language or it teaches me about, about a different time. And no matter how busy you are, no matter how many plates you're spinning, there should always be a little bit of extra energy, a few minutes at the end of each day, where you can keep working your brain. Education is not just about formal learning, it's about lifelong learning. So keep pushing yourselves, keep developing yourselves and moving out of your comfort zone. And the third point I wanted to share um, is aim to give something back. And unfortunately, having a, a high quality of education, it's, you know, it's not a right, it's not a basic entitlement, it's still a privilege in my country and here. And we're all so lucky, lucky, lucky to have had the opportunity to come to university to study at this level in fantastic facilities. So do please think, I'm sure lots of people here in, in this room today already do this, think about how you can give a little bit of your time and a little bit of your energy back, either to do some mentoring um, or to do a bit of teaching in your spare time, to volunteer for a charity or for a group that tries to improve other people's educational opportunities. I do quite a lot of work for the career service um, back in Cambridge, but also in Newcastle, where I'm from, Newcastle upon Tyne. And I also do some mentoring for a group of, of girls who most of them are between the ages of about 15 and 18. They've been bullied or they've had eating disorders. They've all got confidence issues. And a lot of those young ladies struggle to leave the house. They're scared to get on a bus to go into town on their own. So I meet them every so often and we talk about different ideas and explore different themes. And I think what I would say is if you, if you volunteer and people who already do this will know this, you get so much back from that, that mentoring relationship, that coaching relationship yourself. I find it humbling to look at what those girls find difficult and how brave they are. And when I'm facing something difficult in my job, I often stop now and think it's hard for those girls to get on the bus. It's hard for me maybe to, to do something that I'm struggling with, but they have the guts and they have the courage to do it. And so should I, if I think I'm any kind of role model or mentor for those young ladies. So please just think about what you can do because everybody has that spirit of generosity and everybody has something valuable to share with other people. So do please think about that either whilst you're a student or later in life about how you can share something of this great experience back with other people. So they're my three things really. How you think rather than what you know. Don't get lazy and think about what you can give back to the community around you. It's been a real pleasure to be here today and to see your beautiful school. So thank you very much for the invitation. I would like to come back again someday and I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you very much.